Hi, my name's Rain, and I'd like to just quickly do a quick side-by-side uh, -side comparison of a modern classical guitar and a 19th century copy of a Panormo guitar. So here we have a Michael G concert, and this is a Paul Fisher copy of a 19th century Panormo. Straight away you can see the size difference. There is literally about 3% difference between a 65 inch scale and a 63 inch scale. If you look side by side, <clears throat> you can see the difference in the fretboard as well. Much larger and slightly larger back to the bodies as well. This is tuned to A432 and this is tuned to A440. So there is quite a difference in tension on the strings as well as action and feel and you can see the, the action difference there as well. I mean, if I just put the panel more in front you can really tell the difference there. Scale length, smaller fretboards, if you look at the back and the size of the fretboards, headstocks, Real big difference in uh, size. Right, so Panoma was based in England. He was uh, Sicilian descent, but from France. His, his father went to France, and they were violin makers originally. Came over to England, they set up the shop. Um, it was Panoma and his, his brother, and I think the, the daughter and the cousins. So there was, was quite a big family that uh, made guitars. Uh, when Saul came over to England to visit, he found Panorama and played and recommended Panorama guitars. Panorama, I think this is the Spanish version. There are two different versions depending on the original label. There's one that's Panorama Fisset, which is made by Panorama French style, and then the later style, which is literally on the labels in the style of, in the Spanish style of. It's fan bracing and he used uh, a similar system to the Torres guitars. The, the two were kind of uh, feeding off each other I suppose, I, I'm not too sure. Um, most of the Spanish style guitars had uh, were rosewood with fan bracing, um, Spanish necks, uh, uh, Spanish, Spanish secret tops, maple headstocks and the latest innovation of the day, geared tuners. The early Panormas had Peg tuners, like you'd see on a traditional flamenco guitar now, where the, the pegs in and it's held by rosin or something, some sort of uh, gripping material. But yes, peg tuners. The biggest difference is this is a 63 scale centimeter length, all right, and that is 3% um, smaller than my concert guitar. Now you might not think that 63 to 65 is is a big difference. But actually it is, and it makes a huge difference when you're playing those early saw pieces where it's got those big stretches, or even the Aguado piece, the Aguado study that I'm, I'm going to be doing uh, a little bit later on, you'll get a link. Just being able to hit that G sharp over an E is so much easier on this guitar than it is, say, on uh, a modern concert guitar. So, tuning. A432 compared to A440, ever so slightly lower, which means the strings are a little bit, I want to say unresponsive, but they, they don't respond as quickly as, say, an, an A440 concert guitar at a higher tension, and that is key. This has got less tension than my concert guitar, and that makes a big difference with uh, response. So this has got a slightly slower response, which is going to affect its tone. It's probably why it's got such a sweet tone. Right, so here's my concert Michael G first.
totally different sound, totally different character. Not as much and not as bright. Uh, that might have a little bit to do with the strings as well. Uh, the G hasn't got new strings on it, whereas this has. But the basses, you can really hear the difference in the basses. The bass on the modern guitar sounds completely different. And this has got, I think, a slightly sweeter tone. A lot of it is down to the shorter neck and the less tension. This is tuned to A432, whereas that is A440, which does make a difference. Um, uh, and the smaller body, tighter, tighter response. Here's a short excerpt from Opus 35, number 22, the B minus 30. just playing through that piece now. I'm a modern guitarist and I play with a straight wrist. I feel that if I drop the wrist a little bit more I'm gonna get more treble into my um, top notes which are a little quiet compared to the bass. I've also noticed with this guitar that it blooms wonderfully with the bass notes. The whole guitar I can feel the whole guitar bloom with those notes. Anyway what I'm gonna try it with the dropped wrist and we'll see what happens. Straight away you can hear, you can hear the difference between here to here. So I have a, I have a feeling that's one of the reasons why the, the wrist was so high. It's to get better projection and to cut through. So what I'd like to do is just play a couple of excerpts uh, from Saw with this guitar so you can hear how beautiful it sounds and show you just how easy it is with some of the places. Opus 29, number 13. Just, just starting that now, I can feel that there is a massive difference with it. I can now understand why I saw them had the guitars up at a higher angle. Right, let's try that again. Straight away, I can feel the difference. I've had to lift, <laughs> I've had to lift my leg up from what I would call a normal sitting position, purely because the bout of this guitar is so much lower. And so, uh, yeah, I now understand why Soaring them had a, a much higher playing position.